You've been charged for staying dedicated to the grind. You have the right to remain silent and keep the hustle to yourself or help others with the game. State your name for the record. The legendary cocaine. Um, how do you come up with that name? Well, the name was given to me by my cousin, Code 187, from the group Above the Law. And, uh, you know, been rocking with that name ever since the late 80s. So where is hometown for you? West side of Pomona. Lived in the Barja tracks, you know, Kellogg tracks. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, that's where I basically got everything from. My style, my flow, my slanguage and everything. Yeah. So I could say you went to Ganesha High? Yeah, I went to the G High. You know what I'm saying? I went to Marshall. Uh, ate Sloppy Joe's at Kellogg Elementary. Uh, and also went to Park West, too, as well. Oh, so when, then high school years, man, was you into music or are you a D-boy? But what was going on through your high school years? Well, I was always, you know, into music. You know, music is in my DNA. My dad was an established writer and rager and composer at Motown's. You know, worked with Norman Winfield and uh, Smokey Robinson. Did a slew of hits over here. Some of his works uh, was with The Temptations, Just My Imagination. Papa was a Rolling Stone. And plus my uncle is Willie Hutch. And me and Cole 187 come from a musical, musical background, so... Music has always been in my DNA. Couldn't help it. That's what I'm doing now. So where did his name, Jake Gold, come from? Well, that was a name my grandmother named me because I live with my grandparents. Rest in peace to my grandparents. And she always named me something that, you know, she named me something that was pertaining to my eyes because, you know, I got funny color eyes. And uh, she always, you know, my first name is Jerry, so she called me Jake Gold. And, and I took it and rocked with it. And, Back in the days, real b-boy days, you know, that's what I used to do. You know what I mean? MCJ Go. So since you growing up on the west side of Pomona, man, what does Top Hat Liquor Store mean to you? <laughs> that's the hood liquor store, you know what I mean? Um, that's where a lot of things went down. You know, I plead the fifth on that, you know. Can't really say what went down, but that's a landmark liquor store, you know, that we all used to go to and still go to to this day. So let's talk about man Jimmy Hot Tracks. What that mean to you? Well, Jimmy Hot Tracks had a recording studio on, on Mission, and that's where I first used to record my stuff at Jimmy Hot Tracks. I did a three song demo in the late eighties with Cole One Eighty Seven, Layla heard it, who had to, had a line on Easy E and Rufus Records. And once I did that three song demo at Hot Tracks Recording Studio, you know the rest was history. Signed to Rufus, it didn't take me long. But shout out to Jimmy, High Tracks Recording Studio, because a lot of incredible MCs from Pomona came to that very studio. And, uh, you know, it's one of our Pomona landmarks, in my humble opinion. Well, since we on Pomona, man, is Pomona the first city of the IE or the last city of L.A. County? Last city of L.A. County. Very proud that it is, you know what I mean? And uh, we was a small town with, a, you know, they had to prove ourselves. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, when they lived in L.A. or Compton in certain areas, they would come to Pomona and be like, yeah, it's way out here. Ain't nothing out here. But when they came over that hill and seen Elephant Hill, they found out it was very real, real. So, you know, Pomona got history, a lot of talent, a um, lot of unfortunate deaths out there, um, crooked cops, basically anything with a suppressed environment. And, um, you know, because of that one city is the reason why, you know, I was able to cultivate my style with the singing and rapping way back then. This was like in 1984, you know, and Pomona got special history. We got the L.A. County Fairgrounds. A lot of cats used to migrate out there from the Uncle Jam's Army uh, to Egyptian Lover, DJs like Shell of L.A., Maestro from the West Side. Um, we had a club out there called Grand Central Station, Club Blue Sears. We had the Mount Sac dances, Cal Poly dances. And a lot of people, you know, especially in the mid-80s, you know, it was a lot of things going on. The crack first came in, like 84, 85. And at the same time, it was a hot spot for all hip-hop artists. I don't care who's, you know, who. You know, you had Rakim come through. You had Salt and Pepper, of course, Ice-T. You know, before N.W.A., the Wrecking Crew was there. 
And I'm very proud, you know, to come from where I come from, man. That's why we still represent today. And once once I signed with Ruthless Records, I made sure I always promoted Pomona because that's that's the city where I'm from. And, you know, ain't nothing like Pomona. Well, before we get to Ruthless, man, I'm looking at your rap sheet, man. What, what's the lessons you learned from going to jail? Um, you know, I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? It taught me how to be disciplined. You know, it showed me the structure of private corporations and how it's really set up, how they don't want you to organize, how they want to have division, sow seeds of division, because at the same time, being locked up in jail, I was just a number like any other brother was in there. You know what I mean? And, it's, you know, it's it's a messed up situation. But at the same time, what don't kill you make you stronger. So I learned that, you know what I mean? I want to stay out of the popo's way and continue to pivot my life for better and not just keep going down the same repetitious pattern expecting different results. I needed something different to grow. And one of the things that was instrument instrumental in that growing in discipline was just being on my bunk hearing, chow time. I got tired of hearing chow time. You know what I'm saying? So I, I knew it was time for me to think different. You know what I'm saying? And I learned that being locked up in jail you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of cats that go back and forth because of the institutionalized mind. But I knew this wasn't a place for me. Music was always in my DNA and it's time for me to change the way I think. So I'm glad I went through those things, you know, being locked up and, you know, meeting good brothers. You meet some solid cats. It's all kind of cats in there. You know what I mean? From different sides. And, uh, yeah, it was a hell of an experience and something that I don't never want to go through again. So getting assigned to Ruthless, man, did, did that change your life? Oh, absolutely. You know, I was young Coca, you know, doing a lot of talent shows prior to hooking up with Ruthless Records for years. And this is something that I inspired to be, you know, and once Code 187 above the law and all those cats got put on, you know, shout out to Code 187 because he could have forgot about his cousin. You know what I'm saying? But he took me under his wing, branded me the name Cocaine, and told me, you know, behind every Jordan, you need a Phil Jackson. That was my Phil Jackson to the game. And once I got signed on to Ruthless Records at a time to when it was at the dawn of gangster rap, you know, Ice-T set it up with that six in the morning, drew the blueprint. But something about Easy took it, taking his hustle money and also giving – not just his Compton Brothers opportunity, but cats from Pomona all over. That's what made Easy special. He was our West Coast Russell Simmons. So I had a chance to mix it up with him, and it was good mixing it up because creatively, you know, he let us do us. He wasn't like these record companies. You need to sound like a Kumo S1 or this person over here. You know, the thing that made Easy very special is that he allowed us to do us from Pomona. You know, and it drastically changed my life in the most positive fashion. I wouldn't be here today if Ruthless didn't step into the picture. And I never thought I would be the most featured artist in recording history. But I can contribute that from Easy e giving me that opportunity and shine. Tell me, how did the people accept the transition from gangster rap to G-Funk? And let these people know, what is, what is G-Funk? G-Funk is gangster funk. You know, it was slowed down. Created by Code 187, uh, rest in peace, Cam G, Anthony, all of us. We were, we're the architects of G Funk. Uh, you know, go at that time. Uh, Law was managing us, Lay Law, that is. And it was our style. We didn't want to call ourselves Parliament Babies just because we was influenced by Parliament Funkadelic. We wanted to say, okay, we not only just put the P in it, but we put the G in it, and. We just did us. It wasn't no secret formula to it. We, you know, we were very soulful and like talking about different things of substance. And, and but we slowed it down and we instead of calling it P-Funk, we called it G-Funk. Why do you think mainstream ain't picking up cocaine, man? I mean, well, you know, with a name like cocaine, it's, 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 it's the most controversial name in the game, period. And... Um, it's a funny story, man. When I look back years later, you know, it wasn't no secret to controversy when it came to Easy e you know, Knicks for Life. And, you know, they rock with it. But that was a problem for me. People 
and laws at that time, actual laws at that time, wouldn't let play cocaine on a name, even though we spelt the K-O-K-A-N-E to not talk about it's a drug-related name, to only mean like warning, listen, it may become addicting, you're going to get high off his phone. But they wasn't having all that. But I thank God, you know what I'm saying, the man upstairs, that, you know, it was, it was cold nights, man. You put your, your all into it. You're with the biggest record label in the world. And they're not really taken to you. But at the same time, that made me work harder than anybody in the business because I refused, you know, to 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 be shelled out on something that was put in my DNA. You know what I mean? So there, all the all the doors that were shut on me were very instrumental in who I am today, how I rock, how I get down, and especially being able to 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 have my family involved. So. People didn't want to see cocaine, you know, until I got on them, their favorite, favorite rapper's album to where you was forced to play cocaine. And why do you think the streets, every artist got to have a cocaine track, man? Hey, man, I'm just, I'm blessed. I'm humbled by that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to have my ass on my shoulders. I'm just saying I'm humbled by that, you know, to be able to still be requested, be the most requested with the signature sound. Uh, there was a lot of influence intricately that I was a part of. So to see see a worldwide request on different other artists, from A-list artists to to your uh, independent artists, it's just a, it's a big blessing on me. Now let's talk about this empire you built, man, Buddy Boy. How did that come about? Well, I always wanted to start my own label, you know, especially learning from the guys that drew the blueprint and being a participant as well as a disciple, so to speak, of Rufus Records. But anything or, or vision that you have, it sometimes just takes time for it to come to fruition. So over the years, I signed with a lot of record labels, you know what I'm saying, especially after Easy passed and, and um, signing Epic Records, uh, Scotty Brothers, uh, just a lot of labels, you know, and then encountering the doghouse experience in 1999, being being able to take some of my signature sound over there and cross it up with hella talented people over there. And um, once all that subsided, you know, like in 2005, uh, we had a situation with the doggy all-stars that Snoop had. But unfortunately, MCA filed Chapter 11. And everybody basically scattered like roaches and did their own thing. So I knew it was time, but I wanted to create a label with, with the realest people I can trust. And that's with my wife and my family. You know, so we started our label, Buddy Boy Entertainment. And we wanted to come up with a proper name. But my name is Jerry, actual Jerry Buddy Long. And we felt that Buddy, Buddy Boy, because everybody used to say that that's a friendly orientated name to where people can mention that because I didn't want to have problems going into if I came up with another name, like I had problems in my early stages with the cocaine. So we've been going on 13 years. My wife is the vice president. My kids are on the board. And actually the CD that I gave you, you know, uh, is actually executive by my wife and my son, Najee, you know, shout out to the whole family. And I felt, man, it was time for me to go ahead and um, put them in the hot seat because then a sacrifice, you know, uh, especially wifey. But when I was out there trying to get it and not always around, but when I had the opportunity to slow down and smell the coffee, I said, you know what? Y'all earned that. You deserve to be in the hot seat. So we run our company, man, as a family oriented business. There's no cookie cutter. We don't have no sponsors. Everything comes out of our pocket. You know what I'm saying? It was hard at first, but the road got a little more a lot easier once we stay consistent as a family. You know, and that's what I think, you know, more so than the accolades, more so than the turnaround story, is is that when you involve your family in any type of situation or business that you have, I think that's very rare. And I think that's special. So tell a lot of these upcoming artists, man, how how important is it for a, a spouse support, uh, for a spouse to support your dreams? Oh, it's very important. You know, uh, the good thing about my wife, you know, shout out to the queen, Alicia Long, is that I'm different from her. You know what I'm saying? And she's different. 
I think good relationships happen is when y'all accept the fact that y'all different and don't try to be, you know, I want you to be this way. I want you to be that way. Now, my wife allowed me to be me, you know, at the end of the day. She, she didn't have to agree upon everything, but she allowed me to be me. And I think that's one of the significant things of surviving, of persevering, is having someone you can get up in the morning and smell your funky ass breath. You know what I'm saying? It's going to tell you about everybody that she get an intuition on. See, a woman got that intuition. And, you know, if she's able to allow to express yourself, to express herself the way she is, and y'all able to have that camaraderie, you know, you at the same time, you got to listen. You know, I think you got something rare, especially in these times. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's always to have that, that goodness and closeness with your spouse. Because y'all help complement each other and help each other lean on each other in times where you got to take your Superman cape off, you know, real talk. Now, how important is family to you, man? Oh, it's the most important. You know, there's a lot of Hollywood fake shit going on in this game. You know? and since we're talking about the Hollywood fake shit, man, how did it make you feel when Eric showed up at the hospital and cashed out 30K on your kid's surgery? Oh, man. I always mention that. See, a lot of people from the exterior know easy as this and that, or they see them driving down the street uh, crying because they see a, a bulletin. You know, that's Hollywood. But the real deal, you know, and the special bond that I had with Easy e is that he actually cared about his artists, despite of what a lot of people say, man. He don't get the credit he deserved. I think he'd been deserved... Uh, a Hollywood star, not knocking anybody else hustle. But one of the things that's most prominent out of all his success and visionary is that going back to what I said, he cared about his artists. And he didn't have to drive from Calabasas to Fontana, you know what I'm saying, in an hour basically to cash me out. Because my kids was born seven months premature and easy had a heart to go, man. He said, man, I ain't going to let that happen, man. I ain't going to let complications happen to your children when I can do something about it. He said, not on my clock. And every time, every time I tell that story, you know, um, I give a chance to really share it to the culture. You know what I'm saying? How it's really homegrown, you know, as opposed to what you see and hear. And Easy e was definitely a one of a kind, you know, and, uh, he, when I say he had the heart of a G, he had a, he was a, he had the heart of a G, real talk. Man, since we on your kids, man, what's up to all this talent your kids have? Man, that's an exception, man, to me. You know what I'm saying? Being able to see your kids take the baton and, you know, not really force them. You don't want to force your kids to do nothing, but to see them be inspired and take it upon themselves to, to, you know, get their talents and, do their artistry, you know, it's just, it's just, that's the thing that really, really uh, makes me sh smile at the end of the day, you know, seeing your kids and doing what they're doing. And I was blessed with a beautiful family, man, very talented, uh, young shorties that uh, is incredible, you know, and most importantly, besides the artistry and all that, uh, 4.0 students, you know, I think, it's cool to go into a field, you know, or whatever you want to do as far as your goals, but knowledge is power. And I, I, me and my wife, you know, at the end of the day, that's all you want as parents. You know what I mean? It's easy to pick up a basketball, but what you going to do after that? It's easy to sing, what you going to do after that? And it's a blessing to see my children, you know, do good in school and inspire even more for, for greatness, you know, not just by the artistry, but by knowledge, you know what I mean? So it's powerful, man, to, to be able to see your children do that. Now, do you feel like they have to go to college to attain this knowledge? A lot of things they some of the kids did on their own. You know, I think being self-taught is, is, is something different, you know, than your typical, you know, education institution. Um, but some of them going to college, some of them sat on that computer and took advantage of the knowledge and tutorials for years. And it's just amazing, man. It's, it's, it's like that old uh, type of scenario 
that if you stay on the ivory piano, even if you go ding, 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 you stay on it long enough, man, you're going to be playing Carnegie Hall. You know what I mean? So it's that type of perception to, to look back when my kids was younger to where they are now. You know, it's just it's a blessing to see their growth. Man, most feature artists in the game, man. How you come about that? Man, I, I didn't expect to be no most featured artist. You know, I just kept working. You know, I got into. Hold on, man. What do you mean you didn't expect, man? You kept track of them. Yeah, I kept I, I kept track of them, but actually my wife did. You know, I was work I was working one day and my wife said, Hold on. Stop. I'm like, what you talking about, baby? She's like, Look, I've been going through this stuff just to, you know, spark my own curiosity and this is some years back. She said, Baby, you got a lot of features out there. We we need to need to go ahead and, and capture this and see what it do. So I guess it started in the early 2000s where she started gathering everything, you know, together. And, you know, it blew my own wig back because I, I always was just passionate about being in the studio, whether I got paid or not. You know what I mean? I was serious about what I what, what I did. And, and for the last 29 years, I always put out projects. People always requested my sound. And I was always in the lab. And, the real MO behind that, you know, since Easy Pass, you know, that was our lifeline. So all the monies was being held up, but I still had a lane of being requested, you know, so it kind of created a safe haven. So I was always working. That's how I got my Gouda. That's how I was able to pay my bills and put food on, on the table. You know what I mean? And I just kept it up and kept it up. Something that you really enjoy you know, and something that you're passionate about and love, you know, you're going to do your thing. So when my girl in the early 2000s, you know, started putting two and two together, it just created its own self organically, you know, because when nobody thinking about being the most featured artist, you know, you had groups from Motown era, you had groups in the 70s, and people were doing spec songs with each other, but not at the level to where it's at right now. And it also goes back to you know, give an opportunity from above the law to get on their records, give an opportunity to to be on Niggas for Life, introducing characters like Sweet Talk. Those records right there really spark people's attention and say, well, you know, he sound a little like George Clinton, but he took it somewhere else. I want that for my, my shit. You know what I'm saying? And years later, man, pound for pound, over 4,000 features. And I know people, you know, people came to me was like, you lying. You're fine. And it's like, I'm comfortable on my skin. I don't need to let you spark my emotion so you can do this. But now it got to the point to where certain false claims was being made by who's the most featured artist. And I had to basically spank their ass and say, nah, man, certain media publications, you know, you, you can't put out false information to take all this hard man's creativity. You know what I mean? So we put out just a thousand features out of over 4,000 features. Some of the most incredible records, classic records you ever want to hear. And we actually documented those features just so we don't look like we liars. Because the whole significance of it is, is really to inspire the next generation to work even harder and go past your limitations. And even though those doors were shut on me, even though it's political with me right now on some, to a certain extent, this is actually the most featured artist in recording history. So when you look at cats like Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, uh, you look at cats uh, that broke records. Um, they they celebrate top 100 on Billboard at all time. But who can actually say they did over 4,000 features and actually put up 1,000 features? You know what I'm saying? No one could say that. You know what I mean? So it's something to, to, to be celebrated. And also it draws in inspiration to, to, to break the mystique and mystery that at the same time all the hula hoops and trials and tribulations cocaine had to go through, he's still killing the game. This is the actual most featured artist in the world. So it inspires people to, to uplift them and have the right attitude because that's why we here as artists is to not just show the artistry, show our personal testimony because it ain't peaches and cream behind, you know, the lifestyle you think we live. You know what I'm saying? We had to go through a lot of things in order to get to this. So that's what the most featured artists represent. 
And finally, the mystique is being broken out and people are really starting to get it because they actually can see it now. And it's a blessing to my family, number one, because, yeah, I want to leave a financial legacy, but I also want to leave a rich legacy of music royalty. So when I see my kids and they see they pop working hard, do you know how much that inspired my children? You know what I mean? Because we didn't expect this and we all put it together. Man, my kids all the time, man. And people all the time all around the world saying, man, you've been in the game for 30 years, never did quit. There's people that be in the game two years and be one of wonders. And you persevered through us all. Let me stop complaining about my punk ass five years of going through things. Let me stop complaining about these doors being shut. And maybe I can identify just a little bit how to persevere past the shit and have the right attitude because your attitude determines your altitude. So that's what the most featured artists represent. Total inspiration. Well, man, let's talk about the mindset of this finger roll, man, because you got some fire on this album, man. Oh, man, thank you. I, I wanted to do this album uh, with one producer. You know, I didn't want it to, you know, because I'm I'm the one that's really helped creating the, the, the feature game, me and Nate Dogg. It was only two people that really went to the most, and that was Nate and Cocaine, you know, rest in peace, Nate. But I wanted to get back into the old school because when you hear old school groups like OJs, you, you didn't need a million cats on there to sell your record. It was the authenticity of good music and subjects and storytelling and down home blues talent. I wanted to get back to that. So I only got one producer like Quincy and Michael, you know, and his cat name is West Coast Stone. Very incredible man, underrated. And, you know, I'm just glad he's finally getting his just due. We did 18 bangers. I didn't want Jimmy, Jimmy John Johnson on there. You know what I mean? I only got Bootsy Collins. Because I grew up off Boosie Collins, and those cats sold for a billion records, man. You know what I mean? And that's that's part of it. You know what I'm saying? So I was able to get the icon on my stuff. Um, also, Gib Goody, who's really the architect of the A music, would be no, wouldn't be no nothing without those cats from Dungeon Family, Outkast, Goody Mob. And I wanted to keep it right there, and I was able to get a special guest. When I say special guest, I mean that. That's my daughter. Anissa C. Long, we call her AKA Young Colombiana. And that's all I got on my stuff because I'm, at the same time, I use it like like this. You know, even when I do shows, I don't want 100,000 niggas on stage because they looking at this, they looking at that. And I wanted the people to get into cocaine, not who I got on my stuff, but who I got on my stuff and what little I got on my stuff is more powerful and having a whole album with a bunch of features. So that's how we came out with the project. It's music for the soul. We went back to analog, um, went back to storytelling, and it's really fashion after the 70s, 80s, and 90s because in my humble opinion, music nowadays have became a gossip-orientated business as to, you know, you gotta have bars. You gotta have real talent. You know, things became so sugar-coated because it's so much auto-tune driven and it became at the popular forefront, but I'm happy that people are gravitating to this this album worldwide. It steps out out of the region of your own block. And man, we did good the first three weeks, so 62, over 6,200 units. You know what I mean? That might be small, but when you're getting 100, 100%, anywhere ranging from $30 to $65, and then I got my own, buddy boy digital because i got tired of streaming companies raping you know raping the artists and including myself you know what i mean we created our own buddy boy digital so that way we like the malcolm x story get your hand out my pocket you know now the money's is coming directly to us now as an independent i'm breaking more than even you know what i mean and not allowing somebody to shift my energy and my independence this way and that way because at the same time, man, people, there's a sucker born every minute. You know what I mean? And I got tired of, you know, we got tired as a family of putting up all this money and different things and not even breaking even. But we done changed all that. So Buddy Boy is independent and it has its own Buddy Boy Digital and the records are selling worldwide. So if I sell 20,000 units, 
it's better than selling a million with a major. Cause I want the money, man. You keep the honey. So can any artist come to Buddy Boy Digital, man, and get that stuff on your platform? We will open up that the beginning of 2020. First, we get in our shoes. You know what I'm saying? We get our laces on point, tied up right. And we're going to have webinars and different other things, how to teach people how to be self-sufficient, utilize your own independent platform, and actually get paid for what you work hard for. So you're going to be dropping some games, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, most importantly. Yeah. But the game is to be sold, not told. So you're going to have to pay for that. Well, I see you, and you came in here all fly, man, with this cocaine brand, man. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you started this brand. Well, it was started, you know, um, by me and uh, my business partner, Smirk, kept by the name of Smirk and Gato from 818 Lifestyle. And we all came together and wanted to put something um, that was uh, in tune to the community, you know, and came up with this gnarly. Uh, my guy Gato came up with this gnarly logo and we just put it out there, put paint where it ain't. And it's been about, um, I would say it's been about six months and selling like hotcakes worldwide, man. We can't even keep these on the shelf right now, believe it or not. It's good, man, to hook up with some cats that know what they're doing. Most importantly, have the connection to move move the dope. This is legal dope. And, um, yeah, man, it's been going good ever since. The brand is going good. The independence is going good. And I'm looking forward to other business aspects of uh, something that's going to spawn something different and make pivots. But this is the starting point of this apparel. It's called Cocaine Apparel. And, you know, everything that we have is in-house. So everything is on my site at buddyboyent.com. That's B-U-D-E is in there, B-O-Y-E-N-T.com. And we got the online store cracking, and that's what it's about, man. Yeah, Cocaine Apparel. You got to get it, Jack. But you know, man, the west side of Pomona claiming that Sugar Free put Pomona on the map. Come on, my nigga. Why you gotta say some shit like that, man? Man, I'm up out of here, bro. They can't compare us, man. We signed me twin, my nigga. I gotta go. I'm calling my attorney on that one. Grind face.